Welcome to MP Cat History. The aim of this presentation is to support you as a parent to support your child in preparing for their coming PPE examination. We'll begin with Ms Hartley who will review the key content of the papers. Welcome to this presentation. My name is Ms Hartley and I am the curriculum team leader for History at Trinity. We will start by reviewing recent changes to GCSE history. Some changes have been made to the assessment of GCSE history that will impact your son or daughter. This year, it has been decided that students will only be assessed on three topics in the summer. Usually, it would be a requirement that students would be assessed on four topics. The three topics that are being taught at Trinity are Conflict and Tension, the First World War, Britain, Health and the People and Elizabethan England. Your child has already studied Conflict and Tension and Britain Health and the People. These topics were taught during Year 10. Your child is currently studying Elizabethan England. There have been no changes to the number of questions or the question types. The timings of the examinations will not change either. On the week beginning 9th of November, history students will sit two pre-public examinations or PPEs for history. Students will complete two past papers. The first paper sat will last one hour and it will examine the paper one topic completed in year 10, Conflict and Tension, the First World War. The second paper to be sat is paper two, Britain Health and the People. This paper will last for one hour. The first exam paper will test students' knowledge and understanding of the Conflict and Tension unit, the First World War. The paper will ask questions from across the full unit. Therefore, students must ensure they revise the content from all three sections. Section 1 is on the causes of the First World War, Section 2 on the actual war itself, and finally Section 3, which looks at the end of the war and Germany's surrender. Students will answer four questions on this paper. The paper is worth 40 marks and lasts an hour. Four additional marks are awarded for spelling, punctuation and grammar, which is tested in the final question. For question one and two, students will be asked to use sources. They should spend five minutes on question one and 15 minutes on question two. Question three and four require students to write analytically using only their contextual knowledge. They should spend 10 minutes on question three and 20 minutes on question four. Paper two will test students' knowledge and understanding of Britain, health and the people. The paper will ask questions from across the full unit which spans over a thousand years. Therefore, students must ensure they revise content from all four sections. This is very important as this unit requires students to be able to compare and contrast different historical time periods. Section 1 covers the medieval time period and the reasons why medical progress stood still. Section 2 focuses on the Renaissance time period and the reasons why there was some limited medical progress. Section 3 is focused on the industrial time period and the reasons for a rapid revolution in medical progress. The final section examines medicine today. Students will answer four questions on this paper. The paper is worth 40 marks and lasts an hour. For question one, students will be asked to evaluate a source. They should spend 10 minutes on this question. Question two and three require students to write analytically using only their contextual knowledge. They should spend 10 minutes on each of these questions. Question four is an essay question requiring students to make a judgment on the significance of a change factor on a medical development over the thousand year period. They should spend 20 minutes on this question. Revision guides are available to purchase from Miss Hartley. They cost three pounds 50 each, or you can buy three for 10 pounds. My name is Mr Scar, Trust Director of History, and I'll be speaking about how to revise for GCC history effectively. Firstly, the science of revision. Recently, there has been a great deal of research that has come to light on the brain and how the brain works. When we learn, concepts and knowledge are stored in our long-term memory. This, in theory, is limitless. To make learning sticky, we must regularly reach back into our long-term memory to what we have learned and bring to mind what we want to recall. It's important that we regularly clear these paths to long-term memory. This requires a deal of hard thinking and can feel frustrating at times, but the science has shown it does work. Daniel Williams says, whatever you think about, 
that is what you remember. Memory is the residue of thought. So a really useful guideline in revision is to ask yourself, am I thinking hard about this? If the answer is yes, you will find that it really does begin to stick. GCC History Revision, words of warning. Be careful when revising with mobile phones, they can become a distraction. Don't read your revision guide from cover to cover, because this way you're not really thinking about the material. Avoid excessive use of highlighters. Friends can be an unwelcome distraction. And only look at the YouTube videos that your teachers recommend. Flashcards are an extremely useful revision aid in history. They can be made on events or on individuals. They can also be made around questions. In this case, I have chosen Andreas Vesalius. His name goes on the front of the card, and on the back of the card, the key points are written about him. Making a flashcard in itself is a useful process, because it's making a student think hard about the topic. This is why it's useful for them to make their own flashcard. Once flashcards have been made, students can ask family members to use the flashcards to test them. If their knowledge of a particular card is weak, it can go in a pile to be retested in the very near future. Timelines are extremely useful. Firstly, the act of making one's own timeline makes you think about the key dates. When complete, timelines are extremely useful in seeing how a period fits together. This can support students with their basic chronological understanding. Having a strong grasp of when events happened is also useful when evaluating the provenance of historical sources. This very simple timeline shows the lifespan of each Tudor monarch. It gives us an instant visual of the chronology of the Tudor period. It provides a secure understanding on which further knowledge and understanding can be built. Summary diagrams are so useful. They show how a topic fits together. They provide a very clear and simple visual of the topic on which further knowledge can be constructed. Again, the act of making a good summary diagram requires a great deal of thought, which is vital in making knowledge sticky. Don't forget, test yourself, test yourself, and test yourself again. It's so important in making your knowledge stick. The science has shown the importance of spacing out your revision. Leave yourself time to forget between tests, because this can strengthen your knowledge and make learning sticky. It's so important that students ask their teacher for as many examination-style questions possible. In GCC history, most questions are built around stems. For example, the stem for this question is explain the significance. Planning answers to as many question stems as possible is effective preparation as it gets students thinking about the content that might come up and how they will meet the assessment criteria. Examination style questions can be planned on flashcards or as summary diagrams. So, for example, in this question stem, in step one, you would look back on what you've been taught about examination technique. The next step, step two, is to plan answers to each question stem on your flashcard. And step three, practice writing out your answers in time conditions. And finally, step four, self-assess or contact your teacher to assess your answers. There are many useful websites and home learning opportunities. For example, GCSE Pod and Seneca have many quizzes on topics which you cover. BBC Bite Size has some great content and Mr Alsop History has some excellent podcasts on the 20th century. Follow MP Cat History on Instagram for regular posts on Britain Health and the People. Know the specification of your exam board well. Your child is following the AQA examination board. AQA publishes a specification on the key knowledge to be covered. Whilst this is used by the teacher, it can also be incredibly useful for the students. After all, whatever content is mentioned on the examination specification can appear on the examination paper itself. The temptation would now be to say good luck. 
but of course luck does not come into it. GCSE grades are not made by luck, they are earned by hard work and revision. I implore you to prepare carefully and thoroughly for these PPE examinations, following the advice given. The old adage is true, the harder you work, the luckier you are.